What is up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a hump day, hump day, hump day, September 7th, 2022. This is your daily Blitz. I'm your host, Joe Warwick, bringing it to you every every day, seven days a week, your five minute quick hitter. Oh, still riding high off of that victory. I know you're supposed to only spend like 24 hours on a big win. Um, I'm on like day four. <laughs> anyway, mostly because we don't really have much of an opponent coming up this week, but we'll dig into that probably on Thursday or Friday. Um, today, I wanted to update you guys. I promised you uh, I would look into Court Williams, and if there was an injury or any issues, I did get his total snaps. He only played special teams, zero snaps on defense. He had one snap on kickoff, three on kickoff return, five on punt, and three on punt return. Again, zero, zero on defense. So I tweeted that out, and I also, I think I dropped it in one of the comments on one of the, the videos the other day, but wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. So no injury issue with court. He's playing on special teams, obviously. Um, so anyways, uh, to get into the, today's show, I just want to talk about some of Ryan Day's updates from uh, the press conference on Tuesday, uh, specifically like injuries. Jackson, he said, is going to be out. Uh, they're going to evaluate him this week, but it's looking like at least one to two weeks. And there's no reason to rush him back. I mean, uh, awards and stats can take a sideline on this one. Uh, so probably one to two weeks. Definitely will be back for Wisconsin, I would think, unless there's something major. Um, he said Fleming, uh, Julian Fleming was close to going, was a game time decision. He tweaked something in warm ups. So that's why he was in uniform, but didn't play. Um, and then getting into uh, the Josh Proctor uh, kind of benching, I would call it, <clears throat> not to make it sound too harsh, but it's what it, what happened. I mean, he missed a tackle on that first pass play it went for 54 yards and got benched and Lathan came in and and uh, Lathan played a great game uh, I think that penalty on the quarterback where he they said he uh, came in late was bullshit but you know that's another story anyways uh, Ryan Day said that um, that uh, when you play and he's just speaking in general terms, but I think this applies to Proctor's benching is that you have, did you make the play when you play? Did you make the play? Yes or no. And uh, you have to make it count. And I think this is an example that the rest of the team should be aware of, you know, um, that if, if you do not do your job, if you have a very specific job, especially on defense, they made the, the system simple. You have a, a job to do in this particular role and you don't do it. Sorry, but um, Perry Eliano said uh, he wanted to calm uh, Proctor down. So he pulled him out and uh, said that he was great on the sidelines. He was a great teammate and uh, that they're going to need him. They will need Josh Proctor this season. Maybe not due to injury, but just for maybe not even depth, but there will be games where they're going to need his set of skills, right? So it sucked to see him only get five snaps, but it, it's, I mean, you get, Lathan had a great game. So I don't know. I don't feel bad about it, you know? Um, so, and, and Josh shouldn't either. He should support his teammate, you know? So um, moving on. Uh, Ryan Day talked about CJ Stroud moving differently. We saw him rolling out away from pressure a lot in both directions. Uh, he said that they worked on that a lot in the off season. Also, uh, he hit the weight room hard and, and worked also worked on his speed and agility. So, um, they, they did scramble drills to extend the play. Um, look kind of like, uh, reminded us, reminded me of Justin Fields, what, the way he would extend aw away from pressure and keep his eyes downfield and look for somebody. You saw that a few times. He got a Mecca once on a rollout. He got Jane Ballard on the sideline once. And then the big play, the big catch by Mayan Williams on the sideline on that, uh, third down to keep the drive alive. And I believe that was the third quarter. So, yeah. Um, Wide receivers have some technical things to clean up, but all in all, 
but all in all, having two guys down, two starters down, uh, they did really well. Um, Donovan Jackson graded a champion. Uh, Luke Whipler was in a boot after the game, but nothing long term there. I think they're just trying to manage uh, a boo boo. <laughs> um, if he did go down for for any period of time. Either they would bring in Jacob James directly for Luke, or they would slide Matt Jones over to center, bring in Enoch Vamahi, which he had a couple good snaps um, in the game on, I believe, the first touchdown driving. He went in for Matt Jones a couple times. Um, but anyways, so Enoch would come in for Matt at the guard spot. So uh, that's the direction they're going to go. I, I think we talked about that in one of our – preseason shows when we talked to a line depth. So no surprises there. Um, he said, uh, as far as game managing against Notre Dame, he said that they played the field position game because they had so many limited possessions. Um, and I think, I think they had 11 total possessions, but the last one doesn't count because they ran the clock out to, to win the game. And I think then one, another one to end the half, where they took a man. I, I don't remember, but what it amounted to was uh, in essence, nine real possessions, which is very low. Usually you're up in the teens, like 15, 16. So uh, he played the field position game. Uh, Mirko was great. Had a 45 yard average on the day. Pinned like three or four inside the 10. So great day from the punter. <clears throat> uh, he looks a lot more comfortable this year than last Uh and Ryan Day said that they were less aggressive on fourth down. Uh, I don't think they went for any fourth downs. And what were they, seven of 13 on third downs? So, um, yeah, understandable in a tight ball game. You kind of play trestle ball against Freeman, who was playing trestle ball. So uh, we played their game, honestly. It was like a – like Ryan Day said, it was like a throwback game, uh, you know, he said he even had some fullback plays ready to go, but I think he was just kidding about that. Um, but yeah, he, the Buckeyes played the game that Notre Dame wanted. They wanted to keep our offense off the field, limit the possessions and try and keep it close into the fourth quarter. They did that, but uh, the fourth quarter happened. I think if we would have played another quarter, we would have put up at least 14 more points. We were, we were smashing them on offense. And I think the receivers were just starting to get comfortable. The running game was working, you know. Uh, so uh, last thing, Ryan Day said that the locker room was excellent at halftime. He said a lot of positive vibes and communication and, and good energy. And uh, they came out of the half with a, a, a lot of juice. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to see guys not talking in the locker room at half. Um, you don't want to – you don't want finger pointing, obviously, and negativity. So the communication and the energy is huge. And I think we saw that play out on the field, right? Uh, so that that's good to see. And um, but we got to keep it up. You know, you can't get lackadaisical uh, against any team. We've got some some guys coming in on this Arkansas Arkansas State team that are four and former four and five star guys you know, played at power five schools, you know, like Bama, Florida state and stuff. So um, we're going to have to, you know, get amped up and it's a noon game, which is usually kind of a, you know, a, a sleeper, but um, we'll have to, to juice it up again. So that's all I got for today. I will hit you up again tomorrow. Talk to you later. Good bucks. <laughs>